that I've never seen you go to a toilet paper conference or a medical conference. No, but I mean, <laughs> of course, but I mean... Are there toilet the paper is, conferences? Is that... I don't actually know whether that's a thing. <laughs> I'm sure there are. <laughs> Bad Voltage. It's great to have you here. I'm here with my compadres, Stuart Ian Langridge and Jeremy Mugabe Garcia. Look, look, look at the, the wheels were turning. Nothing was going on. I'll be honest with you. Brutal. That, that was, was brutal. the definition of late planning. It was. That I was trying really to think was. of it amusing. <laughs> <laughs> turns, turns out just in time Jeremy comment, not that funny. <laughs> not that funny, yeah. I don't know where Mugabe came from. Jeez, okay. Well, a little a, insight into your mind. Little, no yeah, one wants I'd, further information. <laughs> no one wants further information. But nonetheless, welcome so, to Bad Voltage. Yes, it's great to have you here. We're actually going to talk about one thing today. Uh, we're not going to do the news. We're just going to have one meaty segment, and we're going to talk about conferences. Um, um, all three of us, uh, and I'm sure many of you listening to this, have been treading the boards at conferences for many, many years. Um, you know, tech conferences, other conferences, um, all over the world, um, different sizes, different shapes, different focus. But the question is, what goes into a good conference? And that's kind of what we want to get into today, because let's be honest, there's been many shitty conferences that have happened over the years. And we were just talking about this before uh, we started recording, that we don't really want to turn this into a name and shame kind of situation, because, you know, sometimes... A conference doesn't do a good job and it's they you know they put the best possible effort in or conferences have bad years and then they improve so sure. we're going to use some examples of some good stuff but we're going to stay away from naming and shaming um but we'll give you i'm sure plenty of examples of stuff that isn't good <laughs> so why don't we start out with like what are your favorite conferences like that you've been to like what are the ones that you <clears throat> enjoy and why Stuart, you want to lead off or you want me oh, to okay. grab it okay um so, uh, favourite conferences. I tend to, in general, like smaller, more focused conferences. Uh, if I'm there to right. to yeah, um, like learn combat. and see people, that's that glue that you had at school, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's a, a very, very large conference in Las Vegas. Yeah. This is the opposite yeah. of. It is the actual antithesis of what you like. Oh right. Well, so this is this this is like. And not CES that it's a bad conference. Just when you when you think small conference, the opposite it's of what not you think is X-ray. Right. Okay. No, not that kind of thing. No, and it's also no. not a glue that I grew up with. <laughs> anyway, um, carry on. No, um, the only really large conference that I've been to that I thought was cool was Scale. Um, most of the other right. ones I've been to, so CES or MWC or something like that, um, Linux World back in the old days, um, just do my head in. They're just too big. I mean, obviously, some of those, um, CES is an expo thing. It's not a go and watch talks conference. It's a big, ex big right. exhibition. But nonetheless, I prefer something where we're going to go, uh, if you're going to go and watch talks, it's often a one-room thing um, with a selection of talks throughout the day, and then that's it. Um, something like, even something like scale, it's quite hard to keep track of the the tracks, in fact, ha-ha. <laughs> um, <laughs> because there are, there you know, 25 of them or whatever. But for something like that, that's a more social thing. So I like things like Edge Conf has been really cool, for example. Um, is it the, um, from your perspective, F F F is Conf it... In, here in the UK, things like that. Is it, is it the, like, the talks... The, is it, so it sounds like you're saying like the content and the structure of the talks is important to you, right? Yes. Because everyone has different views about this. Like yep. speaking personally, I very rarely actually go to conference talk sessions. Um, I'm more interested in the hallway track and just meeting people. So conferences like CES are outrageously large and you can never possibly meet a bunch of people there. Uh, you meet 1% of that general audience. And they, that's why conferences like scale are much easier. But I, you know, well, like I say, I don't know whether I'm weird in this regard. Yeah, purely from my point of view, if you're not going to watch the talks and learn things, then 
and you're going to basically to attend the hallway track, there are two reasons for that. Either you're going to shill your business in some way, um, or it's a jolly. You're going there to... Uh, that is not true. Hang on, hang on. Um, okay, you're there, carry on. You're, carry there, on. you're there to um, catch up with people who are friends of yours or you haven't seen for a while or you'd like to do something, or you're there for business reasons. And I, in general, don't pick up a lot of business from conferences. And much as I very much like going to them as a jolly, it's a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> um, especially if I'm going to the States. So, sure. normally, if I'm going to a conference, um, honestly, normally if I'm going to a conference, it's because I'm speaking at it. Um, but right. if, if, I'm, if I'm going to a conference, I'm at least partially there to to watch the talks and learn things if I'm not actually speaking myself. And the hallway track, because, I, because I'm basically hopeless at going around and convincing people to give me work, um, I don't get a lot of use out of conferences for that. So I'm there to hang out with people, which is great. Sure. It's, just, it's just a pretty big expenditure of time and money in order to essentially go to the pub with people I like, which I can do every Friday anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have, it's interesting, and it kind of just dawned on me that we probably should have had one guest on this show, because while all three of our per perspectives are quite a bit differently, all three of us speak at, at conferences with some amount of regularity, and I think our conference participation maybe is a little atypical from what the average attendee is like. It would have yeah, been nice to have yeah. one person on. So, and this would be great for some feedback on the forums that is purely an attendee and has the perspective of someone who doesn't speak, doesn't sponsor, doesn't attend as someone who's worked at a company that has something to do with the conference or, you know, in, in many of our cases has put conferences on, but just as a straight attendee, because I think their perspective would have added a little bit and would be somewhat yeah. to substantially right. different than ours. That is a good point, which the, we did not think of. <laughs> no. Yes. But Jono, you, is, you I, disagreed with my characterization of yes. the hallway track as either business or jolly. What, what's what's yeah, your well, third way then? What are you doing that isn't either of those two things? Well, I think, I think for me personally, and obviously everybody's different, um, the, the reason why I don't go to many conference sessions is because and it's not that I think I've got all the answers that I don't need to learn. Quite the opposite. I've got lots to learn. It's that the main reason why I want to go to conferences is to, is to build relationships and to foster relationships. If I'm sat there in a conference room watching someone speak, I'm not in the process of building and fostering relationships. And my goal for fostering relationships is really nothing to do with, frankly, my business. Right. I'm, I don't go to conferences to get business. Um, I mean, business has often come out of conferences. For me, my overall approach has always been, you know, get to know interesting people and then the business will naturally pan out of that. I think if you go to a conference for the purpose of getting business, it comes across as desperate. Oh, and weird. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I agree with that, right? but I disagree with your argument and I refute it. Thus, you could go and meet interesting people at any conference. It doesn't have to be a yeah. it doesn't have to be a tech conference at all. But I've never seen you go to a toilet paper conference or a medical conference. No, but I mean, <laughs> of course. But I mean, are there toilet the paper is, conferences? Is that... I don't actually know whether that's a thing. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are. <laughs> I, I don't know why toilet I thought paper that con, as an I example. hear is a great time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> TP con, <laughs> TP con. I mean, yeah, but the reason why I tend to go to tech conferences is because of what I'm interested in, right? I'm not particularly interested in toilet paper conferences. So for me, it's the, it's the, uh, what I find really enjoyable. And, and I admit that an element of this is because I work for myself, and it's the same with you, Ak. I spent a lot of my time in my office by myself, working by myself. So going to conferences is, there's no doubt that there's an element of a jolly. It's not necessarily going out and getting smashed every night. Yeah. But there's an element of kind of going out and, you know, sitting around and having coffee people and, and getting to know people. But I'm more interested in those conversations than necessarily sitting and watching a lecture. Uh, now, there are exceptions to this. If there's, if there's someone who's speaking on a topic that I'm particularly interested in or that's very relevant, I'll go to it. But I don't think it's just about in fact, I would suggest to anybody: don't go to conferences just to do just to get business. No, think, no, like, no, no don't, the, yeah, don't do that at all. Like you say, that, the, the that looks desperate. The, 
It looks desperate. It does, the but crux I, is always... I'm curious of, of in your opinion on this, John, because, Stuart, you've already said yours. When I was also doing a consultancy similar to both of you are now, I got a fair amount of work out of going to conferences, be it people that came up to me after speaking and said, hey, that what you said resonated with me. How could I hire you? See that you're, you know, offer yeah. those services or in just networking at, at events or in the hallway track or, or what it may be. So I'm interested, Stuart, you said you didn't. I definitely found that I did. Jono, what, what, what's your experience there? Yeah, about? I mean, I, I definitely get business out of conferences. But more um, accidentally, not me going there to get business, yeah. but as a result of having attended. It, 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 uh, might, it may just be that I'm rubbish and people don't come up to me as much afterwards. <laughs> this is entirely a possibility here. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just, it, like, I mean, and there's, there's, no, there's no doubt that a conference is a a formula it's a it's a forming of people right so if you get to express your ideas or what you do to that group of people then it opens up the possibility that people are going to be interested in doing business with you um yeah, you know, there's yeah, no yeah. doubt there's no there's there's no doubt about that um that, that but all, I'm, all i'm saying all i'm saying is that oh, i don't i don't think it's quite so cynical as people hanging out in the network track is just uh, the uh, the hallway track is just network just jollies and 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 well, I mean, you know, to, and shilling, you know. I, I think what we've described, it's uh, it, it, and describing it as either one or the other is not fair, but it is kind of both at once. No, it isn't. It isn't. If 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 I go to a conference and I'm hanging out in the in the hallway trap because I want to talk to interesting people and get to know interesting people, and I'm absolutely. The goal of this is not to nothing to do with business. Without sounding like a dick, my pipeline is generally reasonably full, so I don't need to go and look for business, right? And and other people are going <laughs> to fall into that category, right? <laughs> Stop laughing, language. Uh, but it's it's true. Like I generally don't need to go. I don't need to go and shill for business. So therefore, my priority is just getting to know interesting people and having interesting conversations. In fact, if I was, me, I can't stand people who only want to have conversations and get to know people purely for business reasons. Yeah, it's it's inauthentic. No, I, unless unless the stipulated goal is, I'd like to have a conversation with you about doing business with you. Of course, that's perfectly yeah, no, fine. I I can, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you in the slightest on that. Um, my, so my, my point is that if you didn't have the business, you wouldn't be doing it as much. Yeah, I did it when I, I did it before I had the business. I've been doing it ever since I've been going to conferences. Like, I guarantee you, anyone who's listening to this, who's seen me at a conference, 95% of the time, you're going to find me either in the hallway track or in the, at the social events. Those are the two places where I hang out. People very rarely will see me in the in the conference sessions or the or the keynote sessions. I was doing that when I was at Canonical. I was doing that when I was at Open Advantage. I I, I agree with that entirely. But to me, that's a jolly. You're doing it because you enjoy it, which I don't have a problem with at all. But you know, fine. how is that a jolly? <laughs> I mean, frankly, it is a jolly in a way because I enjoy my job. So yeah. therefore, everything's a jolly. <laughs> with the, well, with the exception of billing. <laughs> <laughs> and filling in tax returns and shit like oh, that. Oh, shut up about tax but, return. Oh my god, it's nearly the end. Of, it's nearly the end of July. Be quiet. Um, but, <laughs> I, I, I must check that. Um, but no, no, okay. I mean, I, we, we, we argue over semantics, so um, so Yo, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. But so, Jono, you and I both talked about this. Jeremy, what's your thoughts on what uh, what sorts of conferences do you like? Which ones do you go to, and why? Yeah, I was going to say you cut out at the worst possible time there because I could tell you were asking a question and I have no idea I what you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm okay. glad it was you. It's just you cut out for Jono as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so what sorts of conferences do you particularly like and why? So I'm a little bit all over the map, I think, and I attend different conferences different conferences, but different types of conferences for, for different reasons. And I think I also enjoy the smaller, very focused events, you know, maybe uh, 100 to 300 people that are very hyper-specific to a topic, because I think those type of events tr 
tend to get people that are very passionate about that thing and you end up learning about that thing. And if that topic is something that interests you, interests you obviously that's very compelling. I like yeah. community run conferences that are a little bit bigger, uh, all, all things open and scale come to mind where there's just a lot of people there that I maybe only see once or twice a year and it's at that event. And so one reason to go is the, is the community aspect of it where you're seeing those people. And then I also like events foc- that are larger or maybe a little bit more corporate, but that are focused on a topic that matters to me in a work context. So something like Open Source Summit, I'd, I'd, there's nowhere else for me to get access to that many open source programs, office leaders yep. in one place. So every year when I go to that event, I, I take something out of it, both from a personal perspective, as far as people that I've met that will be good to know for, for a variety of reasons in the future, and also actionable items that I can ap- apply in, in open source programs offices that you know I help like Datadog. So um, I think those are the three different types of events broadly that I like. And then events like FOSDEM, I think, are great too, where it's giant, it's a little chaotic, but there's a passion and energy there that are very difficult to replicate, and and I enjoy those as well. So I'm kind of a a little bit more varied, it sounds like. Yeah, wow. Never saw a conference you didn't like. That's pretty cool. Or never saw saw a conference conference (laughs) type you didn't like. Might be a better way of answering it. I mean, the so, super large ones, I agree, are a little bit of a challenge. I don't know if you've ever been to a 50 or 60 or 70,000 person event. The ones that I have been to are it's just logistically a challenge from a conference venue perspective. That means they're super, either super spread out or in a massive place where it yeah. can be a little bit difficult CES, to find things. CES, so. IWC, things like that. Right. Been, to, been, to, I, been I, to both. Nightmare. Not doing it again. Yeah. I don't like those, those conferences that are too big. Um, I think the only thing I, I think those conferences are okay if you're there for some other reason. So I'll give you an example. I was at CES the last time I was at CES. I was working with a client of mine, and they were doing like a whole bunch of press work there. So yeah. being in an environment with all of these people knocking around was fine. But frankly, it was like being in San Francisco and going to a meeting. You, you, it was just a bunch yeah. of yeah. You you like, happened to just, be having a meeting, and CES was kind of next door almost. <laughs> Yeah, and you're paying twelve dollars for a coffee. And whatever, well, yeah, so the, the, like, the whole thing of spending three days living on um, pastries from Starbucks is not. <laughs> <laughs> One question I have for both of you is: I think that there is a spectrum of um, conferences that go from being productive and like serious, meaningful. You know, you come out of it and you think, "I got a lot accomplished. I got a lot done," and then fun. Right, And it's not to say that you can't have fun and be productive. And that, to me, is the perfect combination or, of any kind of Almost by definition. It, if it's a spectrum, there's something in the middle. That's what a spectrum is. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, a spectrum is a small computer with rubber keys. Okay? <laughs> so what, where do you place the importance of fun here? Because uh, this gets back to the point you were making, Ak, about jollies. Because I'll be honest with you, a, a conference that is fun, I'm always more naturally inclined to go to. Um, yeah, um, community run things, um, like Radio Life, things like um, uh, yeah. Fossil Live and Old Camp here in the UK and that sort of thing. Um, uh, they are essentially put on for fun. Yes, people are doing talks and you, you're learning stuff and so on, but I don't think most of the people there are going purely with the intention of taking lots of notes and then going home at the end of the day and going, I have learned a lot, and that was what I went for. It's at least yeah. partially about the social aspect. Um, but yeah. I think the distinction is that the social aspect is is built into the concept of the conference rather than a thing that people do while they're at the conference, if you see what I mean. Um, and, right. and large conferences tend to try and fake this by having organized parties and things like that and it's just not the same thing well they can be fun as well but they are different it's different but there's a scale issue there as well right that's harsh to scale um uh (laughs) not the conference scale um (laughs) this is definitely the dead joke edition of bad voltage i I know It, uh, it, it really is um the um, like, if you've got uh, a conference like when we did like Radio Live, or you've got something like Fostock Live, or like yeah. these smaller events where you have like either you could, less than yeah. two hundred people. You, you could say, thing. okay, yeah. um, we're having an after party, and we've just hired a local place. 
everyone go there, which, which doesn't work if there are 4,000 people in the building. I, I grant you no. entirely. But the other thing as well that's unique about those examples is they are inherently British. So, like, if you've got an audience that is more of an international audience, like, I think it can be a little bit more difficult to... Like, Lug Radio Live and Fast Talk Live are just... It's, it's basically a big chunk of it's going down the pub uh, and hanging out, which is a distinctly British uh, cultural... Yeah, but, the, but the, the thing that you do afterwards doesn't necessarily have to be in a pub. I mean, I tend to lean towards things where the after event is just everyone hangs out in a bar and has a few drinks because I like that kind of thing. Right. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, first yeah. of all, I've seen a bunch of people saying, you know, I don't particularly like that. And it would be nice if there were after events that weren't that. But secondly, there are conferences which yeah. do do other things and they're fine too, you know. But what I mean less is so much the, the puppies, just more there is a, it's a small intimate group of people who many of which know each other and therefore blowing off steam is more in line with generally what that group wants to do right but i think if you have let's say um something like scale in the u.s um which is a couple of thousand people uh, a lot of people who go to scale know each other it's very much a community-run conference but it's a much more it's a much broader my more diverse community i would argue like some people like to go and do something an activity in the evening some people do like to just go down the pub and talk um so i think it's it's S- smaller makes that, I think, a lot easier. Um, I, I, you can kind of I, have, I'd agree with that. That makes sense. You know, but I don't know. So, yeah, I, I think fun is a, a, an important element. And sadly, a lot of business conferences can miss out on this. Like, sometimes even the even the social events are just like, this isn't fun. Well, this, this, isn't this, this, this is what I'm saying about attempting to, um, if, the, if the, the social community aspect isn't an inherent part of the conference because it's basically a conference for a community, then attempting to copy the way those conferences work and set up a uh, fun-will-be-mandatory evening event tends not to work <laughs> very well, in my experience, yeah. at least. But, but What do you guys think if- about, about these kinds of like structured evening events, like where you have activities and games and stuff like that because people some people really do benefit and enjoy an activity of some form so i I, I, i'm going to go on a limb here and say that while none of the three of us probably is that's their favorite thing it's because in any conference not in any conference in the vast majority of conferences that we go to we know a lot of people yeah for most people if you don't know a lot of people that unstructured time it could be you know really more of a nerve-wracking event yeah. than fun. Yeah. Because oh. especially if you're a little bit introverted, going into a room with 300 people that you don't know any of and just striking up a conversation is really, really difficult oh, for, just, for just most people. Just about to say people. exactly that. Yeah. So, it, what yeah. it does is so it, I think those structured events, what, the, what it does is for those people, it gives them a excuse to get in the game, if you will, and participate in a way that's comfortable for them that maybe doesn't apply to us, once again, as much as, as I think the average attendee. Yeah, because um, we're extroverted and we do know people. So what happens is, well, you know, someone will say, oh, um, a bunch of us are going to Mur, this place. Yes. Come along, no problem. But if you're sat there in your chair in the conference venue and a bunch of other people all peel off in groups and then you're still sat there when the room's empty there's that's quite soul destroying so having um organized stuff to happen is really is really 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 important for that yes yeah it this this is going to sound weird and i don't think you guys are going to believe me when i say this but um i personally I'm not an extrovert in those kinds of situations. I actually find it, if I'm at a conference that I don't know anyone at, I find it very difficult to go up and strike conversations with, strike up conversations with people. Um, because I feel like, you know, I'm kind of butting in. Like you don't want to be that person who's butting in and an, 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 an unwelcome addition to a conversation. Yeah. And of course, most people are completely cool. Like if you go up and say, hey, I'm John, oh, nice to meet you. Most people are going to be fine yeah. because you're in an environment that is supposed to support that. And anyone who doesn't do that, frankly, is a bit of a dick. Um, but I find it very difficult to do that. It, it, but it is I also difficult. don't like structured... I'm not a big fan personally of like any kind of team building style activity in, uh, now, in an evening. Um, I'm... Providing a a venue and things to do. So um, Scale does this quite well when they have the games evening or whatever. Much as I myself, I'm not 
particularly huge fan of going, oh, great, I could walk across some Lego or something like that. The fact that that's going on means that... <laughs> and you... yet there's a picture of all three of us doing something. Yeah, yeah, thing. we all did it. <laughs> um, but, but that's the point. It's, you're not lining people up and making them go through a specific activity with instructions. You're just providing a venue in which communication can happen and stuff to do so that's not just an empty room where all you can do is strike up conversations with people yeah and yeah. i think and, i think and, that's a good idea you know so you can walk around and talk to the random person standing next to you about this ancient commodore 16 that you see on the table in front of you as part of an exhibit or something like that yeah that's a good point it's less about it seems like it's less about um participating in the activity and having a focal point where you can strike up a conversation, right? Yeah. So you can say it's a Commodore 64 or you can laugh at Jeremy walking on the Lego, yeah. Lego or whatever it might be. You, you're yeah, not, you're not point. providing actual activities for people to do. You're providing a room full of conversation pieces, conversation yeah. starters. So, that's a really so good that, point. Yeah. So that the conversation starter is not you, um, you know, heart pounding, walking up to someone you've never seen before and going... Hi, I'm Stuart. I'd like to get to know you, at which point you either look earnest or a bell end. Neither of which <laughs> yeah. Can we be friends? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> right? that is, I'm a great friend. That's the worst. I hate doing that, and I'm really bad I, at it. I don't enjoy it at all. Erica is great at this. She, she'll just walk into a conversation and say, Hey, how's it going? And I just, I feel just bizarre about it. And the problem is a lot of people who I know think that I'm fine with doing that. But like the, the big, this to me is a, for, for people who don't do much speaking, who are listening to this, this is when, if you speak at a conference, it completely changes the game. Because I think if you go and do a talk, invariably somebody may come up and say, Hey, I caught your presentation today. Yes. Um, and then it will be a conversation start. Very much. Agree. And, if, yeah. if, and if anybody does a keynote or like a, 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 a a lightning talk to a broader audience, whatever. It makes that even easier because there's more people who've seen you, so therefore they will often strike up the conversation. Like I've done this a ton of times where if I end up chatting to somebody who's done a keynote at a conference, it's like, ah, I saw your talk today, great work. And then you're off to the race. Yeah, that helps. That's, again, that's a, that's a conversation starter. But pretty right. much by definition, almost everyone who's at a conference isn't a speaker. Otherwise, the economics of it don't work. So yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So um, yeah, but that's what the, else goes in? Well, what else goes into well, into, into I, this? I thought about some structure here. There are okay. um, a few things which I imagine we would agree are obvious things that need to go into a good conference. Like you need to pick good, entertaining, knowledgeable speakers, and the AV needs to be all right, and you need to keep to the schedule and things like that. So ignoring those, I'm interested in um, smaller things that you think make a conference good, and smaller things that you think make a conference bad. So you don't need to name in the bad thing having a bunch of really boring speakers. We'll take that one as red, OK? <laughs> but <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm interested in <clears throat> smaller tips, little details um, uh, that, that you think, oh, that's really handy when they do that, or that's actually a really bad sign when they do that. So we just did Dash last <laughs> week in, in New York, which is a conference that Datadog puts on, targeted about 1,500 people just for a, a gauge of size. And the one thing that we do a little bit differently than most conferences that has gotten really good response that I wouldn't have thought people cared about as much is a slightly elevated level of food where it's not just standard, but it's quite nice. People appreciated more yep. than I initially anticipated they would. And, and so speaking personally as someone who really enjoys eating... I, I enjoy it, but I didn't think the average conference goer would enjoy it as much as they did. Obviously, not a reason that someone would go back to a conference in, in a you know in a vacuum, because I think that what people really are looking for are the major things like content and, and networking opportunities and things like that. But that's one small detail that I think, uh, if done well, is kind of a little bit of a differentiator. I I, I agree I with that completely. I mean, you know, we we talk when we're doing software development about the user experience and how you want to try and delight people with that, and this is a perfect example of it make sure that there's enough drinks around so you're not hunting around going i'm quite thirsty in this room uh, a, you know have nicer food than just you know um from the subway around the corner just that little bits that make people go oh that's nice yeah yeah i think a lot of that also really depends on the audience as well 
because I think if as you're targeting more and more senior people, yes, that's true. Like, um, like I went to um, a conference in Hawaii that was really designed for like CEOs and founders and people like that, and the food. Um, this was the second year I'd been to it, and the food in the second year wasn't as good. And by any conventional standards at any conference you would go to, it was excellent food. But for that particular audience that are pretty discerning about about what they eat, um, by definition, it it wasn't acceptable. It was less acceptable. Like if you were to go to a typical conference with like, if you were to go to an open source summit, the food that was at the event that I was talking about would have been fine. No one would have complained. But because you've got like a small group of people who by definition are probably going to be wealthier, are probably going to be going out to nice restaurants and stuff like that. And it was kind of a quote unquote executive focus. So therefore people were elevating themselves a little bit more. The likelihood of criticizing the food was higher. So I think a lot of it really does depend on your audience. Like I think understanding like we, your audience is one of those those details. I think a, yeah. another thing that is maybe I wouldn't put in the small category, but I would say let's go with medium is conferences that get logistics wrong, be it not understanding how people move in hallways. I don't mean the major logistical things cuz obviously yeah. as I just said those are major. Have, but the more minor <laughs> how how rooms get filled, how rooms and entrance and exits, things of that nature. We've I think we've all been trapped in a hallway that was clearly not designed for yeah. the conference that it was at and you get angry about it and that's just oh. it's one of those things that sometimes just putting a rope in the middle so people stay to one side or the other it's small things like that make a very large difference yeah I mean, you know you, you run into um every day again you go to a conference and there are six rooms say and five of them all in a little cluster and one of them is 150 yards away at the other end of a corridor and it's just weird <laughs> um yeah i mean some of that is you know the venue what the venue provides you and so on but just yeah. Little things like, like you say, logistics, thinking about how people are going to go from from place to place. I, I'm a big fan as well of conferences that just, frankly, I mean, this is a very generic statement, but just try to mix things up a little bit. Like we're all familiar with, you know, the keynotes in the morning and then the, the regular conference sessions during the day and you, you break off to these different tracks. I love it when conferences try and mix that up a little bit where they have, like I'm seeing an increasing number of conferences putting on things like office hours where you can go and meet somebody and ask a series of questions um, or people running workshops or panels distributed throughout the event or, you know, that kind of stuff. I just think having a broader range of content because the big issue I have and one of the reasons why I don't go to a lot of conference sessions is, is, if I'm engaging in conversations and being interactive with people, my energy is going to be up. Whereas if I was to sit in, um, like we've all sat in meetings all day and, and you just particularly after, after you've eaten lunch, you can just feel that afternoon lull. So I, I think from the attending sessions perspective, sessions done well are, are really beneficial. And I think maybe you aren't in the demographic that it, it, it's interesting to, but so for, we, we give a lot of talks at Datadog to use a specific example. And, and one of them we give for, for about the last year or so was called Kubernetes the hard way. And everywhere we gave it, the room was filled to capacity where people were listening from the hallway. And in some cases, very, very large rooms. And it's because right. we're scaling Kubernetes further than almost anyone else. And our, it was a very frank talk about the, the problems that we ran into, how we solved them, very actionable information. And it kind of got a reputation for being a talk where if you were deploying Kubernetes or thinking of deploying Kubernetes, engineers want to be in that room because they're going to learn something from engineers that have already been through it. So I think right. good sessions are invaluable to a good conference, yeah. Yeah. especially technical conferences. Yeah. But it's getting yeah. enough good sessions is can sometimes be the challenge because good sessions are difficult. People that are good at what they do and good at speaking and have the time to talk are at a premium. And so every room can't be full with that person. It's just a challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good call, actually. I mean, um, it's interesting. Some of the um, some of the things that make a conference good are really big picture stuff. Things exactly like that. How do you put together your your suite of speakers? How do you make sure that you're reaching out to um, all the different areas of your community, your industry? How do you make sure that you're getting compelling speakers who are talking about compelling things and so on? And then some of them are little tiny things, like have better quality food. 
have your name on both sides of the badge. Honestly, just do that one thing, and I, I'll forget about everything else. Just put your, people's names on both sides of the <laughs> damn good. badge. That's a good point. So I think yeah. some people would prefer the agenda and Wi-Fi password and a couple other things on the back of the badge. I uh, don't think that's a universal one. Then you could put them on the back of the badge as well, or and inside the, the badge, or something. I don't care. Just... If half of the people in the hallway are walking around with their badge the wrong way, which they will be, and you can't tell what their name is, it's really annoying. Just put people's names on both sides. It's not that hard. But I agree with you. I think it's way more important than putting the agenda on. Because A, the agenda changes, and B, yes, if somebody's true. badge is the wrong way around, you don't want to say to them, could you flip your badge or, or, or the other way around? Because no. many of us are pretending that we know the fucking person that we're talking to, and we don't, okay? Because we're all bad at remembering faces. Yeah. Preci- so you precise. depend on that badge. Yeah, they, they just put yeah. people's names on both sides of the badge. You put whatever else you like on the badge, I don't care. Just put people's names, literally, this is like the one thing. But, but there's a bunch of things like, um, well, you mentioned schedules there, right? Uh, I, this has only happened to me in a few places, but it seems to be the kind of bigger business ends of them, where they go, oh, yeah, the schedule, um, you have to download our app to get that. And it's some. Yeah. there's obviously some company somewhere who will sell you, essentially, their white-labeled app, just branded for your conference, and presumably they're yeah, charging yeah. you... Um, ten dollars per attendee, or you know, two hundred dollars overall, or whatever. Just, and it's just have the a good mobile thing. experience agenda. I would agree. Everyone's looking it up on their phone these yeah. days. Ha- have a good mobile website for the agenda. Yeah, yeah. Because I, those, I'm not sure how well those apps work. Because I, mean, I, I am sure how well they work. A few conferences, but <laughs> they're all Bob. Because. Seriously. The, the Google Next one was decent in that it did a couple of things based on geolocation and other stuff, but typically they're not good. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know. I'd like to hear from a conference organizer who's used these a number of times to see how effective they are. Because one of the elements there is yes, you can get access to the schedule, but whatever you can look that up on your phone from the website. Yeah, usually. just put it on but the, the website is, so it's mobile friendly, and then shut up about the app. <laughs> but well, but the other thing as well is I think people uh, often will want to install those apps so just in case other attendees want to get in touch with them, right? And um, the one time I used it. Uh, there were clearly people who were just reaching out to a ton of people, right. basically spamming a ton of people for yeah. meetings. I think and the then, only time something then, like that yeah. makes sense are those giant conferences where if you have 50,000 attendees and, you know, 800 tracks going on where it's maybe a mobile site is not the thing you want, having an app for those very specific use cases might make sense, although they still might not. But for the average conference, it absolutely doesn't, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. So I have... um. I have another question. Uh, conference T-shirts, yes or no? Depends on the T-shirt. A, a well-designed, well-fitting one. I still take to this day, even though I have an unbelievable amount of T-shirts. I tend yeah. not to take them, though. Yeah, same here. I mean, if it, if it's if it if it doesn't look like a conference T-shirt. I'll A, take it, and B, probably wear it. Yeah. But if it's just a, you know, a typical black T-shirt with a screen-printed logo on the front uh, with the dates, it's just not interesting. Like, so I just won't tend to wear it. So, like, make it look cool. That, Given your face, Eck, you, it it's, appears to me that you have opinions here. So I, I'm, curious I'm, I'm, I, I am the first to admit that I'm idiosyncratic in this, so I'm not pushing my particular views on anybody else. I mean, firstly... I don't wear round neck t-shirts, so I don't want a conference t-shirt. Secondly, as a conference organiser, it's a massive pain because you need seven different sizes of them. And unless you make people declare in advance what their size are, you don't know how many to buy or anything like that. Whereas if you do socks or bags or something like that, then it's just easier logistically to do. But you don't ever wear round neck shirts? There's no point in me commenting on whether conference t-shirts are a good idea when I have no intention of wearing them. But this is uh, actually an interesting question then. So what is the best conference swag? Because I agree with you. From a logistical perspective, conference t-shirts are a pain because you've got not just the different sizes, but you also have multiple different cuts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? This is so, the point. you know, in the old days, we'd call it men and women's t-shirt. And I think now it's, uh, I forget what. Um, you quite, I forget you, you the, quite, you quite the forget new t- slim fit and fat guys like me and what have you. But but the, the, the right. point is that you need a bunch of different ones. And someone's always going to be left out and why are you doing why are you putting together a plan that's going to leave some of your attendees thinking oh well i wasn't catered for them but sad about that 
Right. Which is why I think Cut. I'm seeing a lot of places move to socks now, which I think is actually not a bad idea. Um, socks yeah. have been super popular for us, although now everyone does it. Scarfs have been somewhat popular. You know, one of the we best like cool conference giveaways scarf. that I... One of the best conference giveaways that I've ever seen, I'm going to show you guys this, but people on the, uh, on the podcast are not going to obviously see it, is this. Bitnami. I've got, I still I've got one of those. It's in my still laptop carry, bag. Yeah. <laughs> so to describe this for those of you listening, it's basically, it's, a, um, it's basically a cable that's got like USB, like normal USB, USB-C, micro USB, the Apple connector. Uh, so you can plug it into a normal USB socket and plug any other kind of phone or device into it and charge it. It's unbelievably helpful. It's got the Bitnami logo, which was my wife's old company, um, on it, and it's useful. Like, you know, yeah. I remember also getting from O'Reilly a um, a little gang plug, you know, where you can plug two or three plugs into it, and it's like a travel version. Ah, <laughs> there's, there's Jeremy's, Jeremy's m- mind's in my laptop bag on the other side of the living room. <laughs> You know, but like actually functionally useful stuff. A high quality battery charger, like mobile charger, is something that yeah, is done a, a, well. External good. battery. Um, I have a very lovely one of those from Microsoft. In fact, uh, really, so that's, was, that's the specific one I was thinking of. Actually, <laughs> really, I actually find that they're overdone these days now. Everyone so it has to be given those out. A lot of people give away cheap ones that are not good, though. They gave away, and I forget if right. it was an Anchor or an Aki, but it was one of the really nice ones. So it was right. Appreciated. Yeah, Anchor one's good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stuff like that, which is um, useful, useful and isn't person specific. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I, exactly. I'm short of a way of describing this, but I mean, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because um, I've seen um, quite a few uh, people I know um, where conferences have given away sort of um, branded nail varnish and things like that, and right. apparently that's quite cool. I I don't really have an opinion on this. People like it. I think it's a great idea. Um, but I, you don't wear branded nail varnish. I do not. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd have to stop buying my nails for that. Um, but, um, but it's interesting. Um, the variety of conference gifts you can do, because you say when someone comes up with a good idea, everyone else jumps on it. Socks was a big one. Battery chargers was another one. And um, those little bit army right. leads are really cool. But what else have you got that's good? I mean, one, one, I, of the, one of the things I found honestly best was um, uh, little notebooks um, with, uh, with uh, the, uh, the one I had, uh, the Google logo in the front. Um, and right. they gave, uh, that was years ago. And they got to the end and they had a bunch left over. So I grabbed like six. <laughs> and I've still, I've still got one in the inside pocket of my coat to this day. And they're just super useful. Just, right. just little pocket um, blank paper notebooks. Yeah, nice pens, I think are good, or like pens that have, like I got this pen, which I'm going to show you guys, which is, uh, this is actually from a construction firm that was a client of mine, and it's got like a little um, spirit level built into it, and it's got like mini uh, screwdrivers, like eyeglasses screwdrivers built into the pen. That's pretty cool. Right. Surprised you got that through TSA. And it's, yeah, yeah, and it's a nice pen. Actually, yeah, I am, but I was just thinking like a Swiss Army knife or something like that, but... Well, if you hear about a if you hear about a dashing English guy murdering someone in a plane with an eyeglasses screwdriver, <laughs> then you know that would be a challenge. But yeah, th- this kind of useful um, thing, st- yep. stuff that yep. goes in your laptop bag. US- I-, I always think USB sticks are a good idea as long as they're not. You know, every now and again, somebody go giving away a USB stick, and it's like you know, two hundred and fifty six megabyte USB stick, and you think, thanks. <laughs> you know, what people should get. You know, what people should give away in this. In this era of uh, laptops not coming with many ports on them, but you know, you know these kind of like USB the style mini hubs. dongles where you can plug in like SD cards and, and they've got normal USB slots and whatever else. Those kinds of things, extremely useful, yeah. relatively cheap to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. I remember, I remember getting one of those cable organizers. You know, like it's like a flat thing that you wire your cables into, so when you put it into your bag, they don't go all over the place in your bag. I remember getting one of those from OpenSource.com. Again, use That sounds like a good idea. Rucksack. Why don't you use it? I've um, never seen this supposed thing that keeps your cables tidy, and I've seen your no. bag a number of times. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually a very good point. It's a nice idea. I don't use it. I just, I don't know. You know why? Because I'm, um, 
I like to live a life of mystery. That's why. Oh, really? Okay, that's the reason. Is it <laughs> fine? Um, but yeah, that kind of, that kind yeah. of useful thing. I think is good. So, so we've talked um, about little things and um, that make a conference good. What are things that you think conferences shouldn't do? What well, well, what's an immediate? This is a bad sign for you. I mean, you know, they, 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 again, there's the obvious ones. There's things like having product pitches disguised as talks. You know, right. But everybody hates that. I've never. Have you ever met anyone who thinks that's actually a good idea? No. No. No, I haven't either. Uh, everybody's no, and and I get that. That's just the business that a lot of conferences operate in, right? People pay pay for keynotes and they pay a lot of money, or their, you know, top-level sponsors of the conference expect a keynote, and that's part of the sponsorship. I get that that's how it works, but it isn't great content um, because I don't think there's often in, in, in many of those conferences a, a lot of requirements around the quality of the content. I don't think a lot of conferences will say, you can buy a keynote, but you've got to follow these guidelines in terms of it not being too product It, it has to have been good enough that we might have given you a keynote anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, in terms of the negatives, I mean, obviously, like the inverse of everything we've said so far, like, you know, poorly laid out venues um, are not good. Um, running out of coffee. But keep the coffee flowing yeah. all day. All day. Or, you can or, add some chai latte. Also, yeah, well. waving a tiny flag for people who don't drink stuff. Have, I don't mind what else you have, right? It can be, you can do tea if you want to. I mean, tea made in a urn uh, tastes like dishwater piss, but I'll live with it. It can be water if you want. That's not a problem. Whatever. Don't just... There should be water Don't available just do coffee. All day. Yeah, yeah. There should be should be water. Nothing worse than being someone you yeah. think, oh, I'm thirsty, and there's nothing. So... Yeah, or you've got to go and spend $7 on a bottle of water at the ridiculously overpriced conference convention centre. Welcome back to, coffee welcome back yeah. to CES. Um, so, another thing that I thought of while I was um, prepping for this, and I can't decide what I think about this, because I believe there are two schools of thought, so I'd be interested in yours. Um, if you, This only applies to large conferences with multiple tracks. This is not a one-day, one-room conference thing, right? So if you've got a large conference with lots of tracks, and you're interested in one particular topic, you're interested in Kubernetes, say, do you think that all the Kubernetes talks should be in one room so you can basically sit in that room for the whole day or do you think that you should have to follow your track around the building in order that you get up uh, and mingle and so on ha. this was in fact a point of discussion when we used to run the ubuntu developer summit <laughs> it was and this and this is um this is part of the reason i'm bringing it up because i honestly don't know what i think because on the one hand it's really annoying if you think you knew I was going to conference organisers. You knew I was going to want to watch this talk, this talk, this talk, this talk, this talk, and this talk. Why are you making me walk to the other end of the venue for each talk in the five minute gap? That's just really annoying. <clears throat> but equally, if you do just camp out in one room for the whole day, you're kind of missing out and you're inclined to tune out a bit. It, it also yeah. means that if let's say that topic ends up being more popular than the room will hold. Getting in early means you see all the talks and no one sees any of the talks, where moving them around ensures a diversity of, of attendees. That's a good point. Oh, that is a good point. So a good are point. you in general in favour of moving, make, yeah. ma uh, ma making people follow their chosen topic around the building rather than essentially having a bunch of simultaneous separate conferences in the, under the same roof? I think it really depends, at least from my perspective, on what the goal of the conference is, what your attendees look like, what your size is like, will really would impact that decision. Because as you've now noted, there are definite pros and definite cons. So I think tailoring it to what you want your conference experience to be is important. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I think you should have people move around, not just for the reasons that we've talked about, but I think it keeps that energy flowing. Yeah. Like, it's not just the energy of your speakers that's important, but... You, you don't want to generate this kind of vibe where your attendees are getting tired and getting, you know, lethargic. And if you have people move between sessions, it increases the chance that they're, well, first of all, they're getting the blood flowing. Secondly, they may pick up some coffee. They may meet some of the people on the way and start up another conversation while they're yep. walking over there. Like, all of that stuff is good. I think, yes, you, you have the inconvenience of moving, but, you know. 
I think for most conferences, moving is probably the correct answer. For something like FOSDEM, it wouldn't be possible and would be a nightmare. So, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, know, totally. Know your conference. I think the other thing to keep in mind is, is if you're organizing a conference is striking the right balance with including a, a diverse and being uh, addressing accessibility needs so that they don't become an issue, which I think some conferences have been really good at and some have been c quite poor at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I concur. Um, and uh, I had one other question. Um, the plastic bag you get full of leaflets, is it essentially inevitable because you need the sponsorship money? Does, cause does anyone so. do anything other than just throw the bag away? Or maybe put it in their suitcase and then throw it away when they get home? I, I am curious if there is a subset of attendees who really look forward to that bag, and we just don't know about it. I, I, don't, I, don't I genuinely know. don't know. It's, I mean, I, I'm I did, assuming I, they're there because they got money off the thing. But from my point of view, if I was sponsoring a conference... Um, and they said, okay, give us this much money, and in return, what you get to do is put one of your leaflets in the bag. I'd be like, no way, dude. I could just get those leaflets and set them on fire and set the money on fire, and that would be approximately the same experience. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? And I saw, who was it? I think it was Google. I saw some someone posted on Twitter this week, actually. Or maybe it was yesterday. Uh, someone posted on Twitter about they had a sign-up at a conference where, I think it was Google, was saying... Uh, we've decided to not have any swag and invest that money into diversity programs in our uh, community. Yeah, I saw that. And, and I thought, top-notch, Google. That's a great idea. That is a good idea. Um, and, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Maybe you have a, a, a more reduced level of swag and you still invest that money elsewhere. But I'd like to get away from that in the same way that I'm sick of the amount of junk mail that I get. And it's bad for the environment. It's bad for... It costs waste money and all the rest of it um so i don't know I, I think we'll we'll have that for a while but i think everybody does the same thing you get that bag you put your stuff in it and then you chuck all that crap in the bin <laughs> before you leave your hotel this this is this is precisely why i brought it up i actually sat down once i thought i'm being unfair on the bag of leaflets um maybe they're all really really great so i sat down and looked all the leaflets and went yeah, no, I was doing the right thing all along, and I haven't done it since. <laughs> but I've put, you know, I've put only in, you, I believe... Only you would do that. This is fairness. I believe I've put in the hard yards on this point, you know. <laughs> should be, shouldn't be making declarations without the data to back them up, and now I have the data to back them up, which is don't read the leaflets. The one thing I, the one thing I, would, I would say as well on this is, you know, <coughs> was it you I mentioned earlier on about the whole, like, the, old, the overall experience of a conference. Yeah. I'll always remember chatting to this woman who used to work at XPRIZE. He put on a bunch... XPRIZE knows how to put events on. They do a really, really good job of it. Uh, and it's everything from, you know, how the event is structured to how people arrive and how they're taken care of when they get there and all the rest of it. And she said, like, you know, when people... When they leave their house, they're stepping into my world, and I want to make sure every element of this is 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 really efficient and clear and to me some of the best events do that like there's great signage in the venue um it's easy to go and get checked into the hotel they may yep. even for larger events have check-in points at the airport um just that attention know. to detail in general makes it yeah, yeah I money mean, you've got, you've got really, really nice is. set dressing on the stages and things like that i mean i would point out that if you've got um uh, checking things at the airport, you are a ginormous event. <laughs> there aren't that many that do that. I don't, I, right. I don't, I don't remember us ever um, having a special thing at the airport for Lug Radio Live, <laughs> for example. Right. No, no. <laughs> at Wolverhampton Airport. It wasn't uh, like the Seattle airport where it says Microsoft check-in, Amazon check-in, everyone else on Earth go to this small area over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think one of the best people in the business in the open source world at doing this kind of stuff is Angela Brown, who works at the Linux Foundation. Like I was actually talking yeah. to Erica about her last night, she, and it's, she would be mortified if, if if we only highlighted her. But it's not just her; it's her team as well. But they're just that level of attention to detail, and I have a lot of respect for people who put on conferences as regularly as they do because they are dealing with so many different venues, so many different local suppliers in the same way that I have respect for bands who tour around. They have to deal with all of these different venues. Yep. 
and try to squeeze their rig into those different venues. It's hard work. So organizing a, a conference is a lot more difficult than I would have initially, not even expected, but just would have dawned on me. Having now done large conferences, you know, at different points in my career, definitely look at them differently from a, the attendee yeah. Yeah. slash, you know, speaking perspective. And, you know, we go to conferences and to your point earlier, Rick, about the jolly, even if you're there and you're, you're, you're having a productive time, you're having fun. Yeah. Whereas the poor people who are running the conference, they're running you're after running around the whole all kinds time. of oh, yeah. fires that are, that are happening. Yeah, I mean, um, you mentioned, they work you mentioned Dash there, socks off. Jeremy. Um, and presumably Dash was full of things that are relevant to you. How many of them did you get to see? So as someone that was partially responsible for, for most of the content, it was difficult for me to sit in a session the whole time, cause I, so I bounced around to make yeah, sure that I saw right. each speaker. Exactly, exactly. that's the point. Everything. You go in around but, and making sure things are happening yeah. and sorting stuff out and so on, and it's the same yes. for conferences that I've I'm organized or been part of the organization team. You never get to see any of it. You get to the end of the right. two days, you think, that was fun, I think, and then you just go, a boof, and fall over. Yes, <laughs> R- roughly <laughs> exactly that, yes. And, and then... Yeah. Speaking purely for myself, I then spent two days getting my voice back, and that doesn't happen to you, too, so that's okay. <laughs> Every time. Every time, I know. It's tragic. <laughs> Every time there's always the fear before Bad Voltage Life. Oh, God, is, is he going to lose it? <laughs> there's the doom, and then there's Ack losing his voice. It, it, it's the way of things. <laughs> and I'm also worried about Voltage Live about at what point do we push it too far with Alan? <laughs> You know, I, think, I look forward to finding out where the line is. We should probably yeah. dial it back a notch, I think. <laughs> so one so, more thing. Anyway. I know we're running up on, on time a little bit here. One more thing I'm curious about how much impacts your decision to attend or or you think um, impacts other people's, since we've noted, perhaps in this regard, our opinion is not great, is location. And by that, I mean, would you go to a conference because you haven't been to a city or does, does where – where it is impact how much you enjoy it or how much, how likely you are to, to attend in any way. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming we leave money out of that decision. No, so, not really. Not really. No. Uh, you'd go to a conference in Johannesburg. Would you? Well, that's what I'm saying. Money is a consideration, right? Like, you might want to go somewhere. Uh, this is my point. Assuming we leave money out of it, it doesn't matter how much I want to go to the conference. But if I think it's so in for Sydney a lot of people, and I'm paying, I'm not going. So. For a lot of people, if you, let's say your company allows you to go to one conference per year. Right, yeah, okay. So, so, and you yeah. want to attend two, the location may impact. Yeah, so, so I think so getting, leaving... more, getting more cities involved would be nice instead of... It yeah. seems like, at least in the last decade or so, there's been a kind of pattern where one city gets popular and then I'm in Austin 18 times in a year. Yeah, Berlin. Right. Instead of being in Portland 18 times in a year. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it seems to be hopping around where I think I appreciate that part of it is that conference venues at a certain size are very difficult. And so finding one that's nice and, and inexpensive, especially, is appealing. But I think a little bit more uh, diversity of cities would be nice. It, it yeah. would, but there's, there's less on the ground support there. You know, I mean, the, the, yeah. the, um, the, the, it's a snowball effect, right? Um, as a city gets more popular, there are um, more venues to deal with it, but also more people who are in the city who want to do other conferences and more familiarity with the city and so on. So then people go, I'll do mine there as well. And then it's trends, right? Um, yep. but, but I I definitely think that it plays a, a role, and but again, it depends in my mind on the type of the com- on the type of conference. Because obviously, if you're a smaller conference, then you have more options available to you. Yeah. There are more venues that you can go to. If you're yep. running a conference of fifty thousand people, you're you're limited. Um, yeah, a good example again is kind of the conference that I mentioned that was in Hawaii. Um, most of the people at that conference were from the Bay Area, um, but the fact that it was in Hawaii. I think if it was in the Bay Area, they would have found other reasons not to go. But the fact that it was in Hawaii, they could roll in a trip with their families and, and you know, a little bit of vacation afterwards. So it became um, an, a, ver- like a very stated attractive reason for people to go. Like I'm, for example, stoked that the Open Source Summit is going to be in San Diego. Love San Diego. Don't tend to go to many conferences there very often. You know, I'm not particularly interested in going to Seattle uh, that, for another that, conference. That's fair. Actually, MWC was in Barcelona and... 
Yeah. So I got to go to Barcelona. Uh, do you, yeah, that, cool town. That's yeah. interesting because I would have said, no, it doesn't matter to that question. And now you've come up with all those examples. And then you thought, I really like I'm, Barcelona. I'm now thinking, huh, it does actually matter a bit. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like when we were it, at Canonical going to like Budapest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how often do you get to go to Budapest? Once. Like, that was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's how often I got to go. <laughs> then, when we went there for UDS, and it was cool, because now I've been to Budapest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, that's... I'd say it certainly figures into it. If I've got two conferences, I'm thinking, which one of these should I go to? Where it is yeah. will play into that. I don't think I would go to somewhere that I otherwise probably wouldn't have done just because of where it is. But then no. I don't get invited to that many conferences in Hawaii. So Yeah, right. You know. Maybe that would make but maybe that, that would that, make the difference. You know, normally it's sort of do I go to this one in Barcelona or this one in Berlin? At no point am I going do I go to this one in Newcastle or this one in Tahiti? I know I'll pick the Tahiti one. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, it, and I don't think many people would only go to a conference just because of the location. Sure. But if it's a conference you're already interested in, the, the locations may be a sweetener, particularly if it's a location you can get to. Like, like for me to go to Hawaii is like you, Ak, going to Greece. Yeah. You know, like it's it, for you to go, for, but for me to go to Greece, it's like a day and a half of travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same, as, same as me coming to the States. Right, so... Um, cool. Well, so on we'd note, love to hear. I was going to just say, yeah. I would love to hear what listeners think about why you attend conferences, what you think is good about conferences, if, if there's any particular reason that you avoid conferences. We'd love to hear, hear your feedback, As, especially, we want to hear everyone's feedback, obviously, but like I said, especially if you are more of an attendee, genuinely curious what the perspective difference is there. Yeah, yeah. totally, totally agree. So I uh, would love to hear that. All right, chaps. Okay, wicked. We are done. All right, folks. Have a good one. We'll hear from you on the forum, and we'll see you next time.